Yes, um, we are going to wait probably another five minutes or so before we get started. And there'll be people joining us throughout, but I really appreciate everyone taking time this afternoon. We have people from all across the country, um, including authors from all across the country. Nancy's in Virginia. Uh, Maisie's in Oregon. Sheila's in outside Seattle. So Pacific Northwest all the way to the East Coast. My, Nancy, my, uh, one of my nieces just, uh, she's living in Virginia now. Her husband's at Langley Air Force Base. He's in the military. Oh, yeah, yeah, they're a military family. They move every two or three years. I can barely keep up with them. Well, but he's been at the Pentagon. Beautiful. He's been all over. But, um, you know, they just moved. I wish I could tell you where they are. It's a small place. It sounds beautiful, though. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, Langley is great. And I grew up in Virginia Beach out in Tidewater. Oh, right there. I know that area yeah. very well. <laughs> Very cool. Very, very cool. I should jump in too. I'll have a chance and thank Cheryl for hosting this today. It is so gracious. This is, I think, about the third time we've roped you into this. And we just really appreciate you making time. This is a very busy time of year for you. So we really appreciate you taking the time to do this. Well, it's very fun for me. It's very, very fun for me. So and it's nice for us as writers too, because we can see people from all over the country. And you can't always do that if you're on tour. Exactly. Yeah. And I love my annual Cheryl fix. <laughs> <For some leader books, laughs> by the way. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, this is, I'm all about themes, <laughs> much to my family's dismay. Oh no, what's the theme? What do we have to wear? What is <laughs> well, I got my help outfit on so I can help out with whatever. I know you're in good shape. <laughs> before we started, I'm so mad at myself. We came down to our beach digs and I forgot my Santa hat at home on my cute little red scarf. And, and I brought mine because I knew you would yeah, have put your Santa hat on. Oh, you're so cute. That looks so cute on you. Yes. So you are totally ready. I've got my, this isn't even a winter jacket. I have my summer. Last year, I have this because last year you required it. <laughs> you were like, we have a hat. and a half. <laughs> well, see, look at the use you're getting out of that thing. Um, and I, hopefully maybe some of you out there, you've got your Christmas studs on. <laughs> hopefully you're getting in the Christmas spirit now that, you know, it's going to be right around the corner here pretty soon. So I know. I don't know what it's been like where you guys are, but um, here it is almost back. I mean, business is not pre-pandemic yet. I mean, I think the people are, there's a lot of uncertainty and COVID is still a disruptor and there's a lot of economic instability, but people, I mean, there are five parties every night. I mean, it's like pe nobody could party for two years. And now it's like, I think there are five or six things every evening and I'm going, Ooh, okay. So um, <laughs> hopefully we won't catch yeah. a, new yeah. 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 We should a new year party. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Socializing is coming back with a vengeance. And, you know, we had, this is kind of an interesting statistic. We had a slower summer this year than we did last summer, even though there was less COVID concern this year. But that's right. because we live in a community. It's a small town, 7,000 people. And it's affluent and educated and everybody travels. And because they could, they did. So our loyal patron base, it happened to every merchant in town. It wasn't just the little independent bookstore. It was everybody was like, what are we doing wrong? Where'd everybody go? Well, Europe, Mexico, you name it. They were just yeah. gone. So Get they're now back. Now they're back. So well, we're, we're going to be traveling here in just a couple of weeks. I'm taking a group of readers on a Christmas cruise. So I'm very excited. Going to get all kinds of goodies at those different Christmas markets along the way. And I'm hoping, though, that I won't bring back any germs. You know, the thing we're traveling. Are you going to like Frankfurt and Dusseldorf? We're starting. This particular one starts in Vienna and ends up in Nuremberg. So oh, it's going to wow. be very fun. My husband, the German professor, will be on hand to translate. And so it's, it's I'm really looking forward to it. We, and we've been doing quite a bit of travel this year yeah, so far yeah. we have not caught any bug but i mean we've done a couple of cruises people are you think oh that should be the safest place because you have to boost and test and on and on and people were still getting it so it's just like i guess it's gonna i keep hearing it's gonna be with us from now to the end of time but oh well life that goes will on. be uh, i've always wanted to do that let's talk about a charming holiday fest oh trip well, wonderful this will be our third Marcus. one i i'm if i get interest i might do another one too because i'm so hooked on these they're just magical so if you guys get a chance to do one of these seriously i mean oh my gosh 
that would be so much fun. I'll be on a cruise in two weeks too, but I'm taking my son that's turning 15. Oh, cruise because he's obsessed with my my son is autistic and he's obsessed with Disney and he's oh, how funny. On a Disney cruise for a long time but I was like I'm afraid to take you on a cruise because you're yeah. a little too intrepid for me um but now that he's older and he's a little bit more predictable yeah, uh, yeah. I'm like okay I agreed to take him for his birthday because he so was just the two of you then just yeah, the two of you? Us, yeah. oh, oh, you're brave girl. <laughs> Fun. It'll be fun though. It's a good, good chance to like spend. My husband and I were like, we were a little bit like jockeying for who got to go on the cruise because somebody has to stay with the other kids. Mm-hmm. Um, so we were like, who gets to go on the birthday Christmas cruise? Because <laughs> um, I have two kids who have birthdays in December. Um, oh, but wow. my daughter did not want to do any, she did not want to go away for her birthday. She didn't want to go anywhere. And so it's a single birthday trip instead of she was like no I don't want to do that so <laughs> oh that oh that's gonna be fun I'm assuming you're gonna post pictures on Instagram and stuff oh yeah yeah stuff. we'll get lots of good good pictures he's he yeah. likes to get I always ask my kids because they're teenagers now I'm like can I post your picture um online and he's the one that's always like absolutely like or post oh, you. That I made. post me <laughs> so <laughs> Very cool. Okay, everyone, we're going to get going in just about a minute. Um, I think people will continue to join us, but I want to, uh, I'm, I'm sensitive to everyone's time, especially those on the East Coast. So we're going to try and keep everything to an hour. I'm Cheryl Pop, the owner of Sausalito Books by the Bay, an independent bookstore that's uh, right here on the waterfront in Sausalito. Um, a community locally owned and operated. I've been in Sausalito for 30 years. And um, when I retired from corporate America, I thought this would be my hobby and a retirement. But I opened three months before the pandemic (laughs) and I'm working seven days a week. But it's a labor of love. I love books and I'm passionate about doing events like this and supporting authors. So really delighted that you're all joining us this evening. Um, We are going to launch the holiday season with a very festive hour of fun brought to you by some of our favorite uh, women's fiction romance writers, all of whom have published dozens of books. They are prolific, to say the least. They are all New York Times, USA Today bestselling authors. And they're joining us from across the country. Um, Nancy's all the way on the East Coast in Virginia. Sheila is up outside Seattle and Maisie's in Oregon. So um, if you want to post in the chat box about where you're coming in from, we'd love to know. And we really appreciate you joining us. Um, Webinar protocols. um, You can see us. We can't see you. But at the end, there will be an opportunity for me to bring you on live and for you to show your face and ask a question. But in the interim, you can also put questions and comments into the chat box. I think everybody's pretty um, Zoom uh, Zoom enabled these days. Everybody's pretty savvy about it. Um, so do that. Don't hesitate to do that. And we'll go through those. But you, we will try to address questions at the very end. Um, this entire program will be recorded and you'll all get a, a link to it on YouTube. So you can listen to it again um, in case you're miss some of the answers to those trivia questions. Um, If you order books from us and support not only our independent bookstore, but the writers, then you will be eligible for some great door prizes that the authors have contributed. I'm going to do a brief introduction to all our writers and let you know in advance that unfortunately, Rayanne Thane, the very last minute was unable to join us. She has a son who's very ill and we think he's gonna be fine, but he is in the emergency room, which is scary for a mom. And so um, she's doing the right thing by being with him instead of us. But um, he is in our prayers and I'm sure he's gonna be fine, but um, he's been struggling with, uh, uh, an illness for a while now, and they're going to keep him overnight. So she won't be with us, but she's with us in spirit and she's donating a door prize. And, um, she, I'll tell you, she, um, she's in Northern Utah and, um, her, her books, like all these authors have won numerous awards and, um, her most recent holiday book is all is bright. So yeah, there it is. Yeah, thank you. There, yeah, there thank you. Mine are all piled up in the back. So yeah, hold the books up when I, when I mention them. Um, so now I'm going to go back to Nancy Nagel, 
Um, she gets the long distance award because she's joining us from Virginia. And um, she retired from corporate America there and writes uh, small town love stories that um, so there's a little suspense and mystery and um, they're all love stories, a lot of heart. They're great. Um, and are you still riding the Palomino horse? <laughs> no, I horse. actually sold the Palomino horse. Oh, no, no. <laughs> I, That's my favorite part of your book. At least I got him on the cover, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. Okay, that's I thought I saw that and I thought, oh, there's the horse. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, okay. So one of her many books, very this is very exciting. Just recently, The Shell Collector, which is one of my favorites of hers, was made into a movie. So congratulations on that. The book to movie um, experience is something we could have a whole program just on that. I think mm -hmm. um, her most recent her her holiday book this year is Mission Merry Christmas. Hold it up. Oh, Hold it up. It. Merry Christmas. <laughs> there it is. Okay. Sheila Roberts is joining us from Washington, and um, she is, most of you on this call know all of these authors, but I'm going to do brief intros. Um, contemporary historical romance fiction. Two of her Christmas books have also been made into movies. One of them was a Hallmark movie, so it's very cool. And she's kind of the ringleader of all of these programs, all these literary ladies. And she has two books. Um, one is a sort of a novella that's in a collection called on the way to Christmas. And the other one is the road to Christmas. Um, there you go. Maisie Yates. We're so excited to have Maisie joining us. Um, it's the first time she's been on one of our little forums and she lives in rural Oregon with her three children and her husband who I love this. You know, I asked them all to send me sort of a bio, what they wanted me to say. Her husband, this sounds pretty provocative, his chiseled jaw and arresting features continue to make her swoon. Can you tell she's a romance writer? <laughs> um, and the other thing she put in her bio, which made me laugh, is that she considers herself a pioneer because she makes an epic trek on a daily basis, several times a day, from her office to her coffee maker. So <laughs> yes, welcome like to all of you. Welcome to all of you. I so appreciate you spending time with us. And I am now going to pass the baton to the mistress of mistletoe, Sheila Roberts, who is going to, con she's going to basically host the rest of the evening. So we'll, I'll be back to you at the end. Everyone enjoy. And thanks again for joining us. Yeah, I think, am I still muted? Yeah. Can we hear me? We can hear you. We can hear you. Okay, good. Because my thing, oh, as a mute yourself, pay attention here, Sheila. Technology and Sheila. Oh my goodness. Anyway, so again, a big thank you to Cheryl. She's being so gracious to, to uh, be at the store that sponsors this party that we're having. And we truly, truly appreciate it. So lots of fun ahead. And some of you, when you first came in, heard me tell you, get your piece of paper and your pen or your iPad, because as you know, we can't have a party and not play a game. It's all about fun and games. And we're going to start out with some fun games here. So I'll give you about one second to make the mad dash, or if you've got your iPad. And I will remind you, oh, the, by the way, Cheryl, you probably saw, I see a lot of people were posting that, wondering if the chat was disabled, if they could post it, and they're probably okay now. So, and yes, and her, I can't, her see the chat I can't hear her, but I'm assuming she's saying, yes, it's all in your control was working because I returned um returned to someone so I'm not sure but I'll work on that I will work on that while um, okay while we do our fun and games yeah. so guys and hopefully that will all be fixed up as we're moving along you can post your correct answers uh, after after and the Q &A, they can use the Q&A so they can use that they yeah use the Q&A then to post your right. questions we're going to do a little trivia because those work the best for doing an online party I happen to have a, um, a holiday book trivia game for you all and so what I'm going to have to ask you to do is write your answers on your piece of paper in your iPad whatever and then at the end I'm going to ask the question again and I'll let y'all bring in with what you thought the answer was so but for right now don't post the answer because I have found that it makes other people really 
irritated, <laughs> irritated. That's kind of my favorite word, irritated and irked all in one. So we want to make sure though that we aren't like ripping out the answers when somebody's still trying to think it up. So hopefully you all have your pen and paper now. You're all ready. I know my pals are ready to go. So we're going to get started on this because we do only have an hour and we have a lot of stuff to do here. So again, these are all Christmas book trivia questions. A lot of these should be very easy for you. So here's our first one. We all know about Ebenezer Scrooge and the ghost that haunted him. But when he was young, what was the name of the employer who made such an impression on him? What was Scrooge's employer when he was a young man? When he was looking at his, his um, the ghost with the Christmas past and they were looking at his past. What was the name of his employer who had such great Christmas spirit? That's question one. Okay, Nancy's no writing. Are you still no thinking? <laughs> okay, all right. Knew, now this one, I know y'all are gonna get. What size was the Grinch's heart? What size was the Grinch's heart? It is a very important medical question. What size was the Grinch's heart? Any of you who have read this book, read this book to your kids, hopefully will know that. Okay, here's another one. In which Narnia book? Does Father Christmas appear? And that's Father Christmas, that's the, you know, that's English for Santa Claus. So which Narnia book does Father Christmas appear in? Hopefully I'm not going too fast for y'all. I'll read one more time when we're done. Number four, what children's book was turned into a movie starring Tom Hanks? What Christmas book was turned into a movie starring Tom Hanks? My all time favorite actor. Okay, number five, who wrote the book Skipping Christmas? Who wrote Skipping Christmas? The Cronks, remember the Cronks or the Cranks, however they said it. Okay, who wrote that book? That was number five. Number six, was the movie classic It's a Wonderful Life based on a book? We've probably all seen that now because it lives forever in Rerun Heaven, my all-time favorite movie. But was it based on a book? Okay. Uh, make sure I'm on the right thing. Number seven. What was the name of Scrooge's long-suffering clerk? What was the name of Scrooge's clerk? I'm sure you'll all get that one. See, these are easy. <laughs> now I'm slipping in a few of a couple questions about our books too. So we'll find out who's been naughty and who's been nice and who's been reading this. <laughs> All right, here, number eight. In my book, On Strike for Christmas, who goes on strike? Who goes on strike in On Strike for Christmas? Number nine. Was Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer first a song or a book? Which came first, the chicken or the egg? The book or the song? Was Rudolph a song or a book? Which was he first? Okay, that's number nine. Number 10. Oh, I'm shameless plugging here. What was the name of the cat in the Nine Lies of Christmas by, wait for it, Sheila Roberts. <laughs> okay, what was the name of the cat in the Nine Lives of Christmas? Well, one of my now, we got a couple of questions here for our friends. Okay, Maisie Yates is the last Christmas cowboy. Is her contemporary version of what Classics historical romance. This was inspired by a classics historical romance. So we're talking about The Last Christmas Cowboy. Now you might not be able to answer that yet, but if you buy a copy of her book today, then you will know the answer and you can try it out on your friends. Okay. And I'm going to give you, even though Rianne couldn't be with us, I don't want to leave her out. So I'm going to ask a Rianne question also. What series is Rianne's Christmas at Holiday House part of? What series is her book, Christmas at Holiday House? What is that part of? And finally, how many Nancy Nagel books have been turned into Hallmark movies? Probably a million, but see if you can get the answer right. How many Nancy Nagel books have been turned into Hallmark movies? Okay, I'm gonna go through really fast now for anybody that missed it. Number one, um, what was the name of the employer that made such an impression on Scrooge? Number two, what size was the Grinch's heart? Number three, in which Narnia book do we see Father Christmas appearing? Number four, what children's book was turned into a movie starring Tom Hanks? Number five, who wrote Skipping Christmas? 
Number six was the movie, It's a Wonderful Life, based on a book. And number seven, what was the name of Scrooge's long-suffering clerk? Okay, and who went on strike in my book, On Strike for Christmas? Number nine, was Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer first a song or a book? Number 10, what was the name of the cat in the Nine Lives of Christmas? Number 11, what is Maisie's book, The Last Christmas Cowboy? What is the classic historical romance that that is based on? And now our next question, number 12, what series is Rayanne's Christmas at Holiday House part of? And lastly, how many Nancy Nagel books have been turned into Hallmark movies? So hopefully you've all had a chance to answer. Let's circle back to number one, who had it? Let's post some answers in the chat. See if anybody got it correct. And I'll let, I'll let our fearless, fearless leader, Cheryl, kind of keep an eyeball. Fezziwig, yep, yep. Do we see a Fezziwig? Do we see Fezziwigs? If you yep. said Mr. Fezziwig, you got it. I didn't even know his first name. Somebody said Nigel. I didn't even know that. So yay you. All right. How about the Grinch? What size was his heart? Oh, yep. Three sizes too small. If you put three sizes too small, give yourself a point. And how about our Narnia book? Which book did Father Christmas appear in? Do I see anybody posting? I will throw it out and you see if you got it. The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Yeah, I see somebody got it. Yeah, Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe. Okay, what was the children's book that got turned into a movie with Tom Hanks playing 8 million parts in it? Yes, Polar Express. Oh, did, I bet a lot of you saw that. I remember taking my granddaughter to see that. I just love that movie. It's so special. All right. Blah, 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 blah. Where am I? Okay, who wrote Skipping Christmas? That's probably a pretty easy one. Nancy, did you get that one? No. <laughs> no? Oh, that's like putting you on the spot. That was rude. I'll ask you the one about how many Nancy Nagel books have been turned into. You should be able to answer <laughs> that one. Right? <laughs> I think we've got Skipping Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that, well, yeah, that was his one Christmas book. He, yeah, he yeah. Did. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. How about It's a Wonderful Life? Was that based on a book? Yeah, somebody said no, and it kind of more like not exactly. It was based on a short story written by a man like Philip Van Doren Stern, and it was called The Greatest Gift. So kind of interesting, and I, if I remember correctly, he, he printed and bound a bunch for, you know, for friends as gifts, and it just caught on. People just loved the story, so I think that's pretty cool. All right, let's see. I lost my place. Where am I? Where am I, you guys? What have I done? Where am I? This clerk. Oh, yeah. Scrooge's clerk. Who was Scrooge's long suffering clerk? Yes, Bob Cratchit. If you said Bob Cratchit, you got it. And how about who went on strike and on strike for Christmas? That was a really old book. So if somebody gets that, I'm going to be really dazzled and amazed. Mom. If you didn't get it, the wives. Oh, yay. Well, thank you, Donna. Yeah, yeah, the wives, all the women in town wound up going on strike and making the guys do everything. Okay, how about Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer? Was he a song or a book? Book, yes. Now, I don't know how many of you know the story. This is such an interesting story behind this, too. Um, I made a note here so I would not mess this up. It was a small book. It was written by a man like Robert L. May, whose boss at Montgomery Ward asked him to write a cheery little book for the holidays for their customers about an animal, okay? And at the time, this poor man, his wife was dying and he's struggling to support his family. And so this book became popular and then it became a song. And then this is pretty amazing. The actually the people, the uh, Montgomery Ward, his boss or somebody there gave him the rights back to that, to what he'd written and it made his fortune for him. And he did remarry by the way and lived happily ever after and had five kids. So how's that for a nice happy Christmas ending? But he went through some struggles before he got through that. Anyway, I think that's an interesting story about that song. Okay, what was the name of the cat in the nine lies of Christmas? Oh, yep. Oh, Jeannie. Hi, Jeannie. Oh, Jeannie's a writer too, by the way. It's nice to see Jeannie here. She writes children's books. And uh, so it's fun to have her along. Okay, now we get on to Maisie. Maisie's book. Did anybody figure out what the classical, if we're talking classical romance was, that, that was based on? Sometimes, you know, people, it's right there in front of your face and you don't get it until somebody says it and like, oh, 
Maisie, did you get that answer right? I did, yeah, which is, um, you know, it's no mean feat because I, sometimes I get my books confused and um, they all have, at Christmas, they all have the cowboy in the title, so who's to say? Okay, so did anybody get it? All right, it was based on Emma, Emma, the Jane Austen book, Emma. So, and like I said, if you didn't know that and you haven't read Macy yet and you're looking for some spice in your Christmas, um, you're going to want to check out Macy. She writes all kinds of cool stuff to get you all hot and bothered. So um, you might want to check that book out. All right. And Rayanne, since she is not here. What? That's why I don't have a Hallmark movie. <laughs> they, they don't translate to that channel. Oh, well. go to Amazon Prime. They'll love you. Oh. <laughs> That's funny. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. Did anybody get the answer to um, what series Rand's Christmas at Holiday House is part of? Yes. Somebody said Haven Point. Haven Point, it is. Very good. Okay. So if you got that, give yourself a point. And now let's let Nancy tell us how many Nancy Nagel books have been turned into Hallmark movies. A ton. So it's a little bit of a trick question, actually. So um, I see some numbers, none of them are right. Um, so there are seven, but three of them were kind of out of order. I did the novelizations of the three Christmas and Evergreens. So those books were written after the movies, wow. um, but four of my original books are also Hallmark movies. <laughs> so what's the exact answer then? I'm lost. Seven? <laughs> right, lucky seven, the number of perfection. So we had 13 possible answers. And of course we have to, you know, give something to our winners. So I just happen to have some of my fabulous collectible recipe cards. And this is for cranberry salsa. I got this recipe from my friend. So that's pretty fun. So um, let's, if we pick a top three, Cheryl, would you keep your eyes peeled? And then at the end you can announce them and you guys can message me on my Facebook, bleh, easy for me to say, on my Facebook like page, or you can shoot me an email at Sheila Roberts at sheilasplace.com and say, hey, I won something, send it to me. So let's see, who got 13? Did anybody get all 13? If you did, we are going to be dazzled and amazed. So. Well, darn, I was ready to be dazzled and amazed. Somebody well, said they did terrible. We should have a movie prize, shouldn't we? Okay, how about, let's jump down a couple. How about uh, 11? Anybody get 11? We're looking, we're looking, looking, looking. I'm going to keep going down, then 10. Do we have 10? I didn't think this was that hard, but you know what? It's never hard when you're the one who made the game up. Nine. Woo. -hoo. Okay. Did anybody beat nine? All right. We've got a nine. There's a winner. Did anybody else get two nine? nines? There's two nines. Two nines. Okay. You two nines post to post post or, or email Cheryl or do something. Um, we have a booby prize winner. <laughs> that would be me. Uh, okay. So we have not two. No, did you say two or three, Nancy? I saw two nines. Two nines. We have two nines. Sylvia. Yes. Okay, Kathy and Sylvia, you know what to do. If you don't message me on Facebook or email me, I shall never know. So poor Cheryl has her hands full with um, taking care of door prizes. So we don't want to. Barbara order. has nine as well. Mm. Barbara Miller. Oh, somebody else said I got Barbara nine. Barbara Miller. Okay, Barbara Miller. Way to go, gals. That's great. Good job, guys. Excellento. Well, we're going to move out of game time and into fabulous helps and hints and ideas and whatever the girls might have to share. And I'm going to start with Nancy. Nancy, do you have some fabulous thoughts for everybody for Christmas? I do have fabulous thoughts. I always ah, have. She's got her Santa thoughts. hat on now. Yeah, this is my, in honor of Sheila. Oop, there we go. Um, yeah, so I have some fabulous things. Um, First of all, like Sheila, I love recipes. And on my website, you can download for free the recipe for fa la 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 bonbon. Oh, those look good. Super easy cookie. Well, it's really kind of like a truffle, but they're almost fail proof. So easy to make. And this kind of goes hand in hand with one of my tips for the holidays. You know, we can get so pulled under with just the hurry and craziness of everything we've got to do. But one way to save a little time and look like you have worked your fan tan off is to get together with your girls, get five or six girls together. Everybody makes a different cookie. I recommend you make this one because it's super easy and you can't mess it up. And um, 
do a cookie swap. Everybody does, you know, like four dozen cookies and you know, everybody gets together, you swap out cookies, you have this beautiful, festive, homemade set of baking and you only had to do one batch. So um, that is one of my big tips. My other big tip is wire ribbon. Go to the dollar store, go to your favorite place, buy wire ribbon because it doesn't matter what's in the package if it looks beautiful and anybody can, you can just do a shoelace bow with a wire ribbon and it looks so pretty. So those are kind of my top two tips for the holidays as far as saving time and saving your gray hairs because <laughs> we all one. need those. Yep. That's and I do great. have a couple other things for anybody that's got the littles under their feet and you're trying to keep your grays under control. Um, every week um, through now through uh, Christmas, I've got coloring sheets that you can download from my Beyond the Blog on my website. So take a look out there, download them. They're really fun to do. My mom's been coloring them. I'm going to start posting those um, on Facebook just for fun. But, you know, take a breath, enjoy the holidays, make to time count with your family and your friends make some time to read and refuel yourself because you know we only we only get a certain number of christmases in our lives we need to make every single one count that is really well said and now macy is um she's still got some kids at home so i know her christmas so she's writing she's promoting she is a busy girl and i know you were telling us earlier you have got a pretty exciting Who's coming up with one of your kids? So how are you fitting everything in, Maisie? We're, I'm going to be really interested to see what thoughts you have to share regarding Christmas. I I did not show you her latest Christmas book. Oh, Mary that's so pretty. Cowboy, which I just finished, and it is heavy breathing. Lots of heavy breathing. <laughs> But um, it looks so sweet. Hallmark. But anyway, and I'm sorry, Maisie, that I, I talked about everybody else's, but I, not yours. So. There you go. Okay. Beautiful cover. <laughs> Gorgeous cover. I, I mean, I, I'm going to feel like a slacker. I'm, I'm literally, I am lucky if I get Christmas presents wrapped on Christmas Eve. There's no <laughs> ribbon tips. There's no, um, but I guess that is kind of my tip is you can be imperfect and that's fine. We're striving toward, we, we're just, we're together and that's the best that we can hope for. A lot of times we're wrapping presents until after midnight and we're watching Die Hard because it's a Christmas movie. <laughs> I was just asking my husband, I was like, at what point are we bad parents if we include kids in the Die Hard things? They're almost 14, <laughs> almost 15. So we have two of our kids have birthdays in December. So December is super, super busy for us. And because of that, it's like, you know, we've got a, like really our only tradition is like, let's watch um, Christmas movies together and drink cider. My kids don't like doing the tree, so I don't make them do the tree. Then I get to have control over it. This is a theme. <laughs> you could have people contribute to the meal that you're making, but you could also do all of it yourself and keep everyone out of your kitchen, which mm -hmm. is what I like. Um, and, um, but for me, the biggest thing as far as cooking goes is for the dinner, I used to do like a full Christmas dinner because we host Christmas. So like my extended family and everything um, comes to my house for Christmas. It's the only holiday where like everybody comes. Um, and so, but like I said, I like to, I'll, I'll let people bring a couple of things, but I'm particular. Um, but what I started doing instead of making like a big Christmas dinner was just doing like lasagna or enchiladas, something I can make ahead of time. And I start it the week before and put it in the freezer and then get it out the day. And the only thing that I make on Christmas day is, um, cinnamon rolls that I also start the night before. Um, but for me, the big thing has become, um, baking my mom's pie recipe because my mom passed away a year and a half ago and she used to do the pies. And so for me, it was like, okay, now it's my time to do it. And I like to do that again. Like, it's just me, I do it. And then I feel like I'm spending time with my mom. So like everything for me is just about spending time even if it's like alone making the pies and being like oh like I remember all the things that she told me about making a good pie crust and um if and I'll put up my recipe too on the on my Facebook page because I like to share her pie crust recipe because it's people get scared of pie crust and it's she always told me it's not actually that hard people overcomplicate it they touch it too much and that's what exactly. kills it and um and she's like and use cold water keep it cold that's yeah. right <laughs> to uh two hot pie tips and it and it was my grandma's pie crust recipe and so to me like 
that kind of carrying that tradition on means a lot. And so I do that where it feels important. And then everything else, it's like, it can be lasagna that I made a week ago and froze or whatever, and it's fine. And, and we can all kind of, then we get to spend time together instead of just like being in the kitchen and all of that. So, um, so that's really it for me is like embrace cutting corners. And really that, like you said, like baking cookies with your friends and having them contribute, like, um, and wrapping ugly presents <laughs> because the kids are just going to start them open anyway. Like, I feel like there's adults that will appreciate a nice present, but my kids still don't. It's like, you know, and if you have um, teenage boys, buy them food. I know that sounds ridiculous, but I have two teenage boys and it's really hard to shop for them. And we, we found on Amazon that you could buy foreign snack foods from around the world. And that made us the most popular parents That's last cool. year. They just like food and she got... We got my, uh, my almost 15 year old, a Grubhub gift card last year. So he could order Grubhub to lunch at school. Oh, that's so cute. That's so and cool. They're the happiest they've we ever can been. Do that? Yes. <laughs> well, we weren't even allowed to leave the property. I love that. And here we're talking about wrapping presents, thinking gift bags. Those are the best things ever invented. Just throw it in a gift bag here, kids. <laughs> and you're good. I had to laugh when you were talking about pie. I think it was Mary who posted pie is life. I thought that was so cute. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe, I, don't, I might be putting you on the spot just a little. And if I am, I do apologize. But I, I don't think this is an urban myth. I think a mutual friend once actually told me something about the way your mother and how she named you because she was sure that someday you were going to be famous. That's true, isn't it? It Well, she thought that it was she did spell my name the way that she did because she thought it would look good on a book cover. Oh, that is true. Um, okay. But my maiden name was not was not great. But I traded up when I married my husband. And so it ended up making a great, great writing name. Oh, yeah. Very cool. That's I just great. think that's such a cool story. I just yeah. what a cool woman your mom had to have been. I just like that's such a cool thing to have done. So there you have it, guys. There's a little interesting bit of information about Macy that you might not have known. So, well, I have got, I wanted to share some um, ideas for, for gifting that might be kind of fun. And I'm just realizing, did I write that? Where, where are my list? Oh, good. I wrote it down. Notes everywhere. So I don't mess anything up here. Um, sometimes it's just like, what am I going to get the person who have everything? What am I going to get if I'm on the budget? What am I going to, what am I going to? And so these, I, I don't necessarily have a lot of kid ideas, but I do have kind of family ideas. And one thing I, I think is kind of cool is making a memory gift. You know, our kids for the grandkids and grandkids, every year we would buy a Christmas ornament just for them to have the collection so that when they move out and have their own house, they have an ornament. And now we are, we still have an ornament overload on our tree. I'm not quite there yet, but a cool thing you can do if you're starting to downsize a little or you're tired of doing the big tree, maybe at Christmas or even before you have the gang over and you let everybody pick a present from the tree that means a lot from them and to take home and that's their Christmas gift. That way they're getting a memory. We did something similar. This was several years back. My mom, I had older parents. So my mom, they were married at the height of the depression. My mom had hats ranging from the 30s all the way through like the 60s. This awesome awesome art deco stuff. I mean, she had this huge collection of fabulous hats. And I had a bunch, my sister-in-law and a bunch of the, the nieces and the great nieces over. We did a tea party, a Mad Hatter tea party, and everybody got to choose a hat that they wanted to keep that was grandma's to take home. And that was just when we took pictures of ourselves in the hats and it was just really fun because I, we were in a condo at the time and how many hats, boxes of hats do I need in a condo? So, you know, it was kind of like a win-win, you know, for everybody. So that kind of thing is fun to do. Also, if you happen to have somebody, thrift stores, oh my gosh. So I got to show you this cute, there's a whole set of these cute little mugs that I got years ago. Out of one of the many thrift stores. I love thrift stores. I have four of them. I won't waste time showing you, but how fun are these? So I have these down here at the beach house and I'm probably going to have my hot chocolate with my leftover whipped cream from Thanksgiving in it later because I'm dieting and it makes me so hungry. Anyway, so you can get all kinds of cool things, but what about a little drink package for the liqueur or the girly drink connoisseur in your life? So here I've got my little martini glass and then we got, just go to Bevmo or your favorite place and buy the little sample booze bottle and then include a recipe. And what a fun recipe that might make for somebody. And if you happen to find a cute Christmas mug, if you're looking for a hostess gift, 
fill the mug with some Hershey's Kisses, and there's your hostess gift. Ho, 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 Merry Christmas when you're going out and partying. So those make really neat little things. One more thing, too. Um, you know, we, and I tried the mirror, trying this with my mom and she was the naughty girl and didn't finish out. Got her one of those books where you write about your life story and that way the family can all read it. But um, someone did that for my brother-in-law just recently and he took it very seriously. And the company was called Story Worth, Story Worth Story and then W-O-R-T-H. And this company would send him email questions on a regular basis and he would sit down and answer them and then send them back and at the end of a year they turned it into a book for him and he could move pictures and all kinds of stuff and it was a really cool gift to be able to pass on to his family and the kids so that for the person who has everything maybe you want to get them a story worth or you want to get the, the snacks from around the world if they're a teenager i'm so looking into that as i've seen that advertised so there's another fun thing so all kinds of things that you can do to think out of the box if you're thinking what could i do it's a little different this christmas or maybe that's not going to break the bank those are um, some ideas that might work for you and the other thing of course is a book what a concept we're selling books here today folks um, maybe you are going to want to introduce a friend or family member to a book by a favorite author and we are assume that you're here because we happen to be on your um, favorite author list somewhere in there. And that might be a fun gift to give somebody. And I was even thinking, boy, for Nancy, you, know, you maybe want to give her the DV, somebody the DVD of the movie along with the book and get them inducted into reading because we want to keep the next generations reading. And it's very easy to get sucked into playing video games and all this other stuff and then not reading. So a book makes such a good present for people, you know, for Christmas. So there are some ideas for you. And now I think actually we should talk about our books since we are here talking about Christmas books. So uh, let's see here. Maisie, you want to go first? Sure. Um, so my book is um, Merry Christmas Cowboy, and it's the second book in my new Four Corners Ranch series. And if you have, if you're a reader of mine or you've been reading books for a while, then this is going to have some characters that are familiar to you, even though it's the beginning of a new series, because the family in the Four Corners series are cousins of the Garrett family in my first kind of popular cowboy series, Copper Ridge. And this is also my first second generation story. So the heroine in this book is the daughter of a hero that I had written previously because that's how long I've been doing this now. <laughs> and um, she was 17 in the, um, in the book that came out with her in it called Down Home Cowboy and her dad was the hero. And um, in this one, she is um, working at a bed and breakfast and she's kind of the innkeeper. And um, she ends up with a very, very good looking uh, guest at the bed and breakfast who is um, there in town in Copper Ridge visiting his cousins from, he, from Four Corners Ranch. And they meet and they have kind of an instant connection and she feels like, you know, this is it, she's falling in love. And because my books are not Hallmark approved, um, they, um, they do things a little out of order. They, uh, they hit the sheets before they really are in a relationship, though she really feels like she's in love with him. And um, he ends up leaving and going back to Four Corners and she finds out that she's pregnant right around Christmas time. And she ends up going to spend Christmas with him at Four Corners and they decide they're going to get to know each other. And um, I had so much fun writing this book because my heroine, Violet, is um, so uh, sassy, tenacious. I don't know if she's something. When basically she shows up at his cabin, which is not fit for like a lady to live in. He's this mm -hmm. like kind of broody cowboy guy. And his cabin is very much a bachelor pad. And she shows up and they're like, we're not going to sleep together. No, nothing. We need to get to know each other so that we can like figure out how to be good parents because we've made this situation and now we need to be responsible about it and um he of course just wants to get married and she's like maybe let's be reasonable and have a conversation mm -hmm. um so she's like no funny business is happening but he puts her in the guest room with the little twin bed and she gets irritated and while he's out working she takes his bed apart and steals it and moves it into <laughs> her bedroom and then she swaps the beds and that is one of my favorite it's things my kind of girl <laughs> <laughs> in his room so um she's, she's that kind of heroine and she brings all the christmas decorations down from storage and makes him like have cheer and he doesn't want to have cheer and um it was a really fun book to write and um yeah and it was just fun for me for a lot of reasons but if you're new to the books i don't think you'll be confused but if you're not new to the books there's just some fun little easter egg family connections in there that are just um 
like they're kind of fun for long time readers and fun for me. Very cool. Very cool. I just, I love this. I love the stealing is bad. Oh my gosh. That's so funny. What a great idea. Oh, fun. Okay. Nancy, how about you? I'm, I'm sitting here wishing I was that feisty. <laughs> so um, I have a sweet treat little nugget of a Christmas story this year because I didn't have a full length Christmas book coming out. I have The Wedding Ranch coming out in December that is not a Christmas book. So to make y'all happy, I released this little short nugget of a story. It's a novella. And unlike most of my Christmas stories, this one is set in the islands. And uh, it was a really fun uh, escape for me to be able to write a Christmas story that wasn't necessarily going to be a white Christmas. And so I've got this great sports therapist uh, gal who is um, in a bit of a, a bad situation. Uh, she's working for a, a big highfalutin sports agent and she has gotten this big clinic set up for him and he ends up letting her go right at the holidays and so as a favor to her sister she ends up um, the sports therapist for a baseball player down in the islands who has tweaked his knee um, doing something he shouldn't have been doing on his con under contract so she's got to get him back on his feet and uh, lo and behold through all the bah humbugs and uh, mismatches between the two of them, um, they both find a way to um, help the Drew Laskin, who is the baseball player, um, bring a white Christmas to his nephew. Um, they had planned a ski trip because of all this uh, knee mess. They can't do it. And so they make a false white Christmas in the Caribbean for this little boy and uh, brings them together, brings a lot of joy to a lot of people. So it was a hoot to write. I think you'll love it. You can finish it in an evening. It's the perfect escape for the holidays. Very cool. And I love that book cover too. That's a really pretty Yeah, cover. it's like my year of turquoise. <laughs> year of turquoise, that works. Uh -huh. you like that. <laughs> All I need is some more turquoise jewelry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, funny. Here's Santa. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's too funny. Well, I, um, I've got a couple of books, as Cyril mentioned. I forgot to bring down my um, copy of On the Way to Christmas. It's red. It's ready, perfect for Christmas. And that's um, a part of a collection of three different novellas. So I'm in there with two other authors, Melissa Ferguson and Amy Clipston. Oh, thank you very much, Cheryl. And uh, my particular novel in there is about a mean girl who has kind of gotten convicted about the whole mean girl thing and is trying to make some life changes. And she's got a lot of burned bridges to try and... And, um, you know, they're not even burned, they just fell in the river. So she's a mess and she's going to do a little bit of reaping of some of the things that she's sowed and have some, learn some lessons along the way and, and um, hopefully never be mean again, like a, I'll never be mean again. So we'll see. Anyway, so that's that one. And then on the road to Christmas, and that's my little road trip book, which um, I don't know about you guys, but road trips are often an adventure for me and maybe not the most pleasant one, but I thought, wouldn't that be fun to do a road trip at Christmas? I will never do that in real life, but um, <laughs> I've got three different branches of the same family. We're all working our way to little sister's house. It's her first year in her new house with her husband and the new baby. And she wants everybody to come for Christmas. So, you know, neither sweet sleep nor snow. Boy, I can't talk today, can I? As the saying goes, I just washed my mouth and I can't do a thing with it. Anyway, uh, they're all going to make their way to this house in Idaho for Christmas and have some adventures. And so we've got some funny scenes and some more serious scenes and you know, happy endings all around. I kind of sum it up as saying three different stories, one great Christmas. And uh, hopefully that's that's how it turned out. But that had some storylines that were very important to me and that I hope will be encouraging to people. So those are my holiday books. And then I've also got a reissue of last year's book, A Little Christmas Spirit, which is probably my all-time favorite book. And that was based on, um, that was my ode to Dickens. And I, I love that book. Also, um, we've got, I've got a Christmas movie coming out too. And I, I know my publisher did a limited edition. Heaven knows where you could find it. Good luck in your mission. But the movie is going to be Christmas on Candy Cane Lane. And uh, that's going to be on the Great American Family Channel here this coming Saturday. So I've already got my peppermint and my makings for peppermint popcorn. I just ordered my frapp makings for my peppermint frappuccinos and I have my eggnog and we're just going to sit around and, and see what happens. And that's going to be quite the adventure. So that is all my stuff summed up. 
And before we get to Q and A's, you know, we, Cheryl mentioned at the beginning, all you little happy shoppers who are shopping today are gonna to be eligible for some fabulous door prizes. Brianne could not be here as we know, but she is still offering a prize, God bless her for $25 to be spent at Sausalito Books by the Bay. What a great place to be spending your money. So buy a book and you might even get another bonus. And uh, Nancy, what have you got? Oh gosh, okay y'all, so you know, Hallmark is in my blood. I got this oh, cute, cute Hallmark tote bag and in it will be the red truck kitchen towel and the red truck Christmas and Evergreen book and Christmas Joy, which was my first Hallmark movie. Signed any way you like to different people, whatever. Uh, but that'll all be coming your way. <laughs> all right. Nancy went crazy as usual and don't we love it? Okay, how about you, Macy? What are you giving away to some lucky winner? Well, I had decided that I would do um, some of my older Christmas books, including, of course, The Last Christmas Cowboy, which is, um, like we were saying earlier, based on Emma. So if you've ordered the new one, you'll get the new one. But I've got a bunch in my backlist. And um, as if you're a winner, you can tell me ones you don't have, too, because there's a lot of them. I went and counted them up. But I think I'll give away, you know, several. <laughs> I don't have oh. them sitting me, but I've got, I mean, I've got fairy tale ones with Harlequin Presents. I've got some shorter ones with Harlequin Desire. I've got novellas. I've got cowboys. I've got and whatever your Christmas poison and I, is. I've got it. So you will win a suite of Christmas books from me. That is very cool. <laughs> you oh, are Santa. <laughs> really? Oh my gosh. And you might have somebody that you want to give one of those to for Christmas and, and convert somebody into being a new reader. For me, I just, this just so fits with my story. Isn't this darling, this little ornament we've got? I'm, I'm into giving away ornaments. So we've got the little car on its way to Christmas with the tree on the top. And so that's going to be my gift to someone. And I just think that's really fun. So there we have it. And we'll turn it back to Cheryl if she has any Q&As or anything she wants to do now as we're kind of running toward the end of our fun. On recipes, holiday ideas, how to maintain your sanity throughout the holidays, D-A-Z-E. Um, and thank you for also the wonderful, all the wonderful writing you do for us. It is my favorite sort of book to read this time of year. I don't want anything serious, depressing, horrible. Not that there isn't drama in these books, but um, uh, it's, I just have piles of uh, romance books next to my bedtime, my, my, on my bedstand this time of year, because it's all I want to read about. Um, there were a couple, uh, if you have a question, please post it in the Q&A box. Um, somebody wanted to know, Nancy, about your movie, The Shell Collector, when mm -hmm. and where it was going to be available to view. And oh. before you answer that, I will just say somebody asked if the books purchased this evening would be signed. I'm going to get, I have book plates from some of you, but I will get book plates from everybody. And if you do buy books from us, there will be a book plate in the book. So, so anyway, Nancy, tell us about your movie and when we get yeah, to see so, uh, The Shell Collector is the first Fox original movie and it, it started streaming on the Fox Nation app on Labor Day weekend. So it is up and available. And, uh, um, I haven't checked today, but uh, or tonight, but this morning they were still running their Black Friday sale of a dollar fifty to subscribe. So uh, there is a free trial if you want to try that. If you want to take advantage of the Black Friday sale, that's great. But also first responders and military get a year free. So um, I hope you'll check it out. They did a beautiful job. Uh, when I saw the screenplay, I absolutely cried. Um, it, you know, it's not often that a movie will actually pick up like all the characters and all the storylines. And they really did, um, did a great, great benefit to the story. So I appreciate that. Very cool. Cheryl, somebody was just asking how they order from you. I think I saw a post. I don't know if you saw that or not. Um, I did in the chat box put, uh, I put my email address but I also sent you to our website. If you go to SausalitoBooksByTheBay.com 2022 events, you'll see this event right up there. It's the first event you're going to see. And it lists all the books and what they cost. And you just give us your information and we'll contact you and we'll get the book in the mail to you as soon as we get assigned book plates. So um so you just go through our website. That's the or you can email me directly, either way.
Any other questions? Um, Sheila, where will you travel next? I huh. love all your pictures I, from your last gosh, trip. I am taking a, a one charm Christmas cruise in just a couple of weeks. I was mentioning earlier when we were chatting, we we're going to be doing one of those Christmas market river cruises and we will start for this one we're starting in Vienna and ending up in Nuremberg so I'm very excited to be doing that I told my husband if this goes well we should do another one it's just fun to do things with readers and we may have to Nancy we may have to talk we may have to do a Christmas cruise get all our our Christmas authors together and off we go and that'd be fun. that would be a blast yeah count yeah. me in <laughs> well we'll see we'll see how, we'll see how this goes um, anyway but I, I am looking forward to it those are just really fun and magical and and so we've kind of based it on my book one charmed Christmas so we'll see what everybody thinks but yeah thanks for asking getting ready to do one last bit of traveling for the year ends so unless there are other questions i will ask you all one last question and that's just what would your christmas message be to all of our attendees just a christmas a christmas wish a christmas message to everyone for this year mine would be take joy in the reason for the season and just enjoy the time that you have with those you love and if you can't be with those you love love the one you're with no that was also never mind that's our rock star <laughs> but, you know, it but, always but comes out you know? <laughs> <laughs> just make you know make do what will make the season happy for you and like and i think that would be my wish for everybody that they can find the joy in this season that's wonderful nancy Maisie. Yeah, I think we're probably going to echo her sentiments. Absolutely slow down, take a breath, enjoy every single moment, interrupt worry with gratitude. Um, you know, a lot of the things that we're worried about are, don't even matter. They're not important. Mm -hmm. Take your time, enjoy it. Yeah, and like I said, just the um, letting go of the idea of what a perfect holiday looks like because it's just one where you're surrounded by the people that you love, the people that are there. Um, and I am, I am actually such an offender of thinking I'm like over committing myself. And this is where I've gone to the make ahead. Don't do that. You don't have to do everything. Um, because it's enough that you're just there and that you're with the people that you care about. And that is, that is what's perfect. Well thank said. you. Nancy. So. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I just want to thank you all of our authors for joining us this evening. So much fun. I only, I always end up gaining weight though, because I get all these additional recipes from you. And even she was <laughs> recipes in the back and it's like, oh, I better try the Buñuelos, you know? So it, it was really, really wonderful to have you. And thanks to all of our attendees from all over the country. Um, you know, can I just jump yes, in? Yes, yes, I yes. just thought we better make sure so everybody's clear. So Cheryl is going to draw for these gifts. And Cheryl, I'm assuming you will let us know. And then we will post on our social media, correct? Just to make sure we know. Yes, absolutely. And um, I can also send that out to everyone because I have everybody's email address because they signed up via Zoom. Yes. And you'll be getting a recording of this as well. And, um, you know, love is what makes the world go round and it's what the holidays are all about and that's what our lovely ladies write about so thank you for all you do and thank you for being here and i will just say happy holidays to everyone thank happy you holidays thank you cheryl so much. yes merry christmas <laughs>